This video is brought to you by my patrons. Thank you all so much. How's it going, man? You doing anything for Valentine's Day? Yeah, I'm actually gonna watch the Sonic movie. <laughs> Sonic? But you're gonna watch that movie with someone, right? No, just alone. <laughs> we gonna fucking watch Sonic alone, you fucking furry? <laughs> Why would you waste your money on that, man? Oh, I just lose my fucking number, bro. Sonic? More like, so thick. Am I right? <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog is probably the most cursed movie this year, and the year just started. When the first trailer dropped, people already realized, oh, this movie doesn't look good. But for some reason, a lot of people began thinking, like, the movie doesn't look good because Sonic doesn't look good. But, but that's not true. The movie doesn't look good because the movie doesn't look good. And Sonic does look like a rejected member of the Cats movie, Died Blue. And then Paramount decided to listen to the fans and the people who wanted Sonic to look good and decided, oh, yeah, the movie, it's not that the movie isn't good, it's that Sonic doesn't look good. If Sonic looks good, then the movie's good, which is not true. But anyway, VFX artists started to work double time to make this movie look good, and by that they mean just make Sonic look good. They had to recreate, and I'm guessing here, recreate Sonic essentially, create a new model, then import the animations that they got from the old model, and then fix it up to make it look as spicy and as comic book video game accurate as possible. And lo and behold, it worked! You know that the general audience and the fans were now on board with this film? Everyone was on board with this film, except for the VFX artists and animators who were overworked and then lost their jobs during the production of this film, but nobody talks about that. Either way, as someone who is studying animation, the biggest reason I wanted to watch this film is so, you know, the work these artists and animators put in doesn't go to waste. That was my biggest reason for watching it, and um, honestly, they did a great job. Everything visual about this film is fantastic. Uh, everything else though. <laughs> so this is gonna sound a little specific, but at first, Sonic looked like a fursona from a person who doesn't know how to draw, and then they commissioned someone to do that fursona, but the person who did the commission decided to draw the character exactly like that person drew the character, so it just stayed up looking like a really nice rendition of an ugly f then Paramount realized they're dumb as hell and then they got an actual person who knows how to draw this character to be drawing this character for them to then 3D model. The one thing I wanted to talk about is that Sonic looks really weird sometimes, his face looks really distorted, and that's because of the lens they're using. This is how wide he looked. I'm gonna take this off because it's way too freaking hot, man. It's like, it used to be cold, now it's hot, I don't know what's going on. So Sonic's model looks great, but the thing is that the model doesn't work on a certain type of lens. And I'm pretty sure that's because they have to match the lens they were using when they were filming the scene. Translating 2D into 3D isn't going to be perfect. I've seen this critique online that uh, Sonic doesn't have enough expressions in this film, and people were answering, mostly fans, they were like, uh, what are you talking about? I mean, I haven't seen the film, but look at all these screenshots from the trailer, look how expressive he is. Um, he isn't very expressive in this movie sometimes. And I don't want to sit here blaming the animators at all, but I do want to say that in certain scenes, not all scenes, most of the time Sonic is great, but in certain scenes, when Sonic is supposed to emote in a certain way, his face still feels really stiff. And so I understood that critique. But um, for the most part, I thought they really did a great job with all the shapes on his face, so that was great. I think the comedy in this film is what's really whack, because some of the comedy is absolutely brilliant, and then some other comedy is just trash. Because, you know, there's some scenes that it totally works, and it's absolutely brilliant. Like, I'm like, how, how did you... How did you make this? And then there's other parts where it's like, this is so bad. How did you make this? So like, for example, most Jim Carrey scenes, and I wanted to talk about Jim Carrey because he's a freaking god, this dude is somehow able to make his villain not only hilarious, but scary. Like he's actually kind of scary, which is really weird because it shouldn't work. But it's Jim Carrey, so of course it does. The scene in the trailer where he's like, I'm in charge, you know, that one. Are you in charge here? Yes, I am. No, nope. I'm in charge. Allow me to clarify. Which is his first appearance. It's funny in the trailer, but the way it's kind of edited and the music that goes along in that scene really gives a whole different vibe to the entire moment. And it's really, really good, actually. But then you get Sonic farting, like Sonic farts, and you didn't need that. Sometimes scenes are edited really strangely. Like someone says something and then it lingers too long. So for example, like Dr. Robotnik talking to one of his goons and he's like, you're an idiot. It just, it just stays too long, you know what I mean? I know you got the super speed and everything, but Maddie and I, totally defenseless, probably gonna get blown up. Pretty much, yeah. 
The biggest problem I have with this film is that you have such rich lore and you don't really use it. The only time I felt like, wow, I am in Sonic's world is in the first two minutes of the film. And it's so frustrating because, you know, Sonic actually pulls a Bumblebee. So like Bumblebee starts, we're on Cybertron, you know, and it's like, oh my God, you know? And so Sonic does that too. And then both films commit this crime of going to Earth. And Bumblebee's makes sense, I guess, because I guess Bumblebee has to learn like humanity and help this girl. But Sonic goes to Earth and it's just like, he resolves a problem that didn't need resolving. James Marsden's character wants to go to San Francisco to be a really good cop. He loves this town, but he's, he finds it boring. And like, I get it, because it, it's literally like a small town. So he goes and he wants to really prove himself and be a cop, you know, in a big city. And uh, Sonic is like, what are you doing? Why don't you love your town? Why don't you stay in this town, dude? And what, the problem is that these two arguments can still exist in the same space. They don't contradict each other at all. James Marsden's character has been in this town for years and he loves it, but he still wants to be a cop and prove himself. But Sonic is saying, dude, why don't you like want to stay in your town? Your town is amazing. You, you should love it. You should love it. Sonic is pushing what he wants on Tom Marsden's character for no reason. It just feels really forced. But forget all that. Here's my biggest problem with the film. It's like every other f film. You ever see a kid's movie? Guy who doesn't like where he is, you know, and the kid comes along and then he teaches him how to be a cooler person. There's also the road trip. This film felt like it was just taking from other films instead of making something on its own. Except for Robotnik, which was easily the standout because it genuinely felt like this original goofy semi-scary character. Sonic was a great character as well, but it, it again, it just felt like there was so much potential that was untapped because they decided to make this a human hybrid film when it should have just been a fully CG animated film. The fully CG animated film was the first two minutes of this film that was the best part of the film, I think. That and the final battle. I thought the final battle was sick, but the first two minutes of this film feels like you're genuinely diving into this world that we haven't really seen before. Because even though it's like, oh, kind of anthropomorphic animals, it's like, no, but they all have like these weird colors and personalities and there's a giant freaking owl. And then you have like these other Sonic looking characters. I don't know the Sonic lore, so I don't know who they are. But the people around me who were Sonic fans were like, oh my God, this is awesome. And um, they did that only at the beginning and at the end, but not during the middle. And that's a huge thing that I noticed. It's that in the middle, it just becomes another movie. But at the beginning and at the end of the film, it becomes a Sonic movie. But what's funny is that I want a Sonic 2. I want to see a second Sonic film. I do. But the film can't be the same as this one. From what the first film left off in, um, the second film feels like it could also move away from Earth as like a location that we're always in. But let me just say that Sonic as a character himself is just f***ing sick as hell, man. Like in the final scene, the final scene where there's this action scene, Sonic, Robotnik, Sonic gets like blue freaking lightning, Thor's it up. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty cool. And the way everything wraps up is really nice, you know? It's a good kids film. But it also does a lot of weird shit that makes like no sense or it just kind of like drags the film down. It's it's like so close to being great, but it's not. So it's just okay. It's just okay. It got cold again. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't, you know, completely hate Sonic. I didn't explode on it, but I thought it was it was fine, you know, and Sonic was a uh, was thick, you know, and you know, everything was pretty thick. Uh, you know, three out of five thick, I, I think. Uh, so everything was, 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 was fun. It was good. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much, patrons, for making this video possible. This video is not sponsored by anyone, so I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not a patron, if you are a Chad, thank you for being a Chad. You're amazing. If you want to become a Chad, just subscribe down below. What is a Chad? <laughs> well, a Chad is a a Catwoman loving freak. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for coming to the table. There's a table here and I'll see you all next time.